Hi there, I'm Chef Lauren Smith with Natural Partners, and this is another episode of Conscious Culinary, where we're going to be cooking with one of our manufacturer partners, Natural Health International, and they have their really wonderful line of Himalayan crystal salt. They have all different types. We're going to be cooking with the fine culinary grain today, but they also have the coarse salts that you can put in a salt grinder. They have the stones, and they also have the bath salts. But it's been recently featured for their inhaler on Dr. Oz. It's an amazing product. It's one of nature's wonders. It has 84 ionic minerals as compared to, you think of a typical table salt, only has two. Big difference. Sea salt, again, is kind of the middle ground in between. But again, you don't know where it's coming from necessarily, and the quality of it can be compromised as pollution is, keeps increasing with our oceans. So with the Himalayan salt, it's an ancient product and it assimilates immediately into your bloodstream. You really get the benefit of it right away. One of the best ways to play with an amazing natural salt is to do something baked in a salt crust. Traditionally, you can do like a small game hen, like a Cornish hen, or fish, and that's what we're doing today. We're going to do a beautiful Thai snapper and a gorgeous Himalayan salt crust. Really simple. It takes a little bit of time to cook. All in all, you'll spend about 45 minutes on it but it's totally worth it. You're really going to like it, and you can try it at home because it's a fun technique to learn and very impressive for your friends. For this recipe, I picked a really nice kind of two-pounder fish. What I have here is a wild-caught Thai snapper. Now, you can, of course, use something bigger if you want to serve more people, but with about a two-pound fish, it'll easily serve two people. You're getting those nice, big, beautiful fillets out of that. Again, so I was looking for a seasonal wild fish. It can really be whatever your fish provider has. I preferably would like, at least for a traditional recipe like this, a nice big bass. But this is what I had for this time of year, and it's still a beautiful fish. So when you're picking one out, you want to see nice clean gills. You want to see clean, non-cloudy eyes, the scales nicely intact. And it should be eviscerated, so it should have a nice line down its tummy and all the guts taken out. Crude way of saying it, I know. But that's basically what it is. And when you're buying it from your fish marketer, just have them descale it. They can take the sharp fins off. Like on a snapper like this, they have really pointy fins on the sides and on top. Have them take it off, and then just have them clean it up and wrap it up nicely for you. You can do it at home, but unless you want to play with fish, just have the guy do it. So my fish is nice and prepped and ready. It's clean. I've washed it under cold water. It's good to go. What I'm going to do with it is simply just stuff it with herb, lemon, and put that salt crust over it. So what I have is some gorgeous organic thyme. It has some of those really beautiful little like purple flowers on it. You know it's in season and beautiful. I wedged up one whole lemon. We're going to serve some lemon inside of it as well as raw once we cook it. To make the salt crust, just get yourself a large bowl. And here I have about three organic free-range egg whites. Save your yolks. You can use them for an omelet, anything like that. I'm going to use them later today for an egg wash with some pastries. And you can use either a standing mixer or just an old-school handheld mixer like this. And we basically want to whisk, whisk our eggs up to a stiff peak, and I'll show you the difference. It's going to take a minute or two. OK, so right about now, we're at a soft peak. You can see if you kind of pull it up in the bowl, there's a little tip, and then it kind of falls flat. That's when it's soft. When it's medium, it kind of goes to 45 degrees. And when it's stiff, that little stiff peak stays right on up. That's why they call it if it's a stiff peak or not. So I'm going to keep going probably for another about two minutes. Okay, so we're officially at a stiff peak. If I pull up the peak, they stay nice and upright. So I'm just going to get rid of these little spatulas or whisks. And basically from here, we just fold in our salt. 
So you want to do this kind of gradually. Get yourself a nice spatula. And I'm going to use about a cup and a half worth of this really good Himalayan crystal salt. I'm going to do about a half cup at a time. Just sprinkle it onto the edges. And using your spatula, just fold it on over itself. You want to have this nice fluffy mixture. If you just stir, 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 you're going to work out all of that air that you just spent five minutes incorporating into your egg whites. So this is why we fold. And it's nice with the sea salt because it's pink, so you can see if it's getting incorporated or not. Let's go in with another half a cup. Just fold it right on in. I love the way this looks. Okay, and you just want to scrape up anything that kind of gets stuck on the edges. And let's do our last third. All righty. It almost looks like sugar-coated marshmallow. It's got that pretty pink color on something white and fluffy. All right, we're just about there. Just want to make sure there's no hidden pockets of salt. And that's all it takes for our salt crust to mix. And what we have to do now is just throw everything together. So I have my oven going on about 425 degrees. Everyone's oven is going to be a little bit different, but just keep it at the 400 to 425 range. You need that nice, intense heat. And we're going to bake for about 25 to 30 minutes for this size of fish. Now, again, you want to see this beautiful kind of like brown crust form on the outside. What I'm going to do is take my fish and we're going to stuff them. I have about, I would say, a cup and a half worth of fresh thyme. Now, use as much as gonna, it's going to fit and fill up the body, body cavity. This guy has kind of a smaller cavity, so just stuff away. I don't think you can use enough fresh herb on fish like this. Or if this was like Cornish hen, same thing. All right, and then I'm going to add a couple wedges of lemon. That citrus gives it that like necessary bright freshness in it. Just find a couple spots for it. Okay, so we have our nice little snapper down in our pan. And what I'm going to do is just nice and gently scoop my salt crust mix right on over. And you want to get the whole thing. And just use that spatula to kind of softly press everything down. You want about, I'd say at least an inch covering with that salt crust. And really the way this is actually going to end up cooking is it's basically like a steam. That heat gets trapped inside and that crust gets harder and harder and that moisture gets locked in. And it's pretty cool. The fish is so tender when you cook it this way. All right, let's get all the way down to the tail. Make sure that flesh is covered. We can let his little tail fins roast. That's okay. We're not going to be eating them. All righty. So let's just get the last part of his head. The great part about using a salt like this in your cooking is that it has medicinal properties. A Himalayan salt actually will take you from an acidic state to a better alkaline state. So it's ready to put in the oven. We're just going to pop it in again, remember, for 25 to 30 minutes, but we want to see that nice brown crust on top. And when we take it out of the oven, we're going to let it sit for another 10. And then I'll show you how to present it. So my fish has been sitting for 10 minutes after we pulled it out of the oven. If you can see that 
gorgeous brown crust that we have on it here. So I'm just going to take a knife and kind of crack it open. You want to be a little bit gentle and just slowly peel away that crust. Look at that. Alrighty. And what you want to do is just kind of go down with a knife and work it over the meat and start creating like a little bit of a fillet, so to speak. If you see any kind of cartilage pieces, just set them off to the side, or scales for that matter. And I'm gonna take my knife just down that back line. You see how it just falls apart? Get yourself a platter. I'm just gonna take this knife and work my way down that little rib cage. And that's okay if the ribs come with it. You just have to give your guests a disclaimer. And then this is the collar meat right here that just kind of is falling off where those gills were attached. So we can get rid of that or you can eat it. And I'll work the meat off the rib on this side. You can lift the little tail up if that helps. Okay. And this is, of course, a very rustic dish. So if the pieces don't come off perfectly, don't stress about it. I'm actually going to grab myself a little fork and just piece by piece put my fish onto the platter. Here we go. Look at that. That is a beauty. I mean, what an amazing way to use a whole fish. See these herbs and these lemons are nice and steamed after being inside of the fish. What we're going to do is pull away. You can use the tail and basically pull away the spine. Lay it over to the side. And then we're going to go back down and in for that nice second fillet. Just going to lift it up from the bottom of the pan. And you can see there's that. Uh, top part of the spine. Just get rid of those big pieces of bone. And just cautiously do things with this nice little delicate fish. Just use that fork ever so gently to kind of move things around. All right, let's dig in there. There's some really good meat down here at the bottom. Push it away from the collar. And now we have fish to work with. I'm gonna go right onto my platter. Look at that, it's just like falling apart. It's so tender. There's a nice couple big pieces of bone, let's get rid of those. And when you serve something in this kind of style, you wanna give your guests a little disclaimer, right? So be careful before you dig in. Here's a little bit down here, don't wanna waste any of it. And what's great is that you can use the bones for a stock, a fume, anything you want. I'm just going to garnish it with some fresh herbs and some lemon. And this is like the most simple, beautiful salt crusted fish. So let's throw some of that beautiful thyme that we use to stuff it with onto the platter. Kind of go right on underneath and make a little pretty bed for it. Just makes a nice presentation. So I have some fresh greenery. And then just serve it with some wedges of lemon. like this, and then we'll give it a fresh little amount of pepper right like that. And then as the last finishing touch, just a nice drizzle of that beautiful olive oil, just to gloss it up. No sauce necessary. This is as simple as it gets, but as beautiful as it gets. So here it is. This is our Himalayan crystal salt crusted fish from Natural Health International. A beautiful way to cook meat and fish. The salt crust, it's amazing. It imparts those imperative minerals. Really, really healthy, but also amazing. Fun technique to know how to do. And I hope you guys try it at home. Play with your food a little bit. You'll really like this one.